transform the industries and how we live and work. In the sphere of economics and finance, AI gives the potential to develop more accurate and reliable predictions of market trends. AI can detect fraud and other financial crimes, making the financial sector more secure. Through AI, education can be completely revolutionized. New education policy, ADB 2020, is a really clear example which laid a major emphasis on the use of technology on the process of teaching and learning, which will boost the accessibility rate and make the teaching learning process more efficiency, efficient. According to the reports, AI generates or contributes 7% increase in global GDP. IT services firm Vipro is investing $1 billion in AI sector. A 40-year-old paralysis, paralyzed man was able to walk with the help of AI. I'm referring all these to all the spheres that I've mentioned personal, social, economics, health, and education. In personal spheres, it improves the quality of life by providing personal assistance. Like the virtual assistance, smart devices to make our simple tasks and everyday tasks very convenient and easier. AI is no doubt a very helpful to the, to the human society. So, in every sphere, AI is very limited to be helpful in education and in every sense. The enormous, significant uh, contributions, developments of AI could be nothing but way to the betterment and the advancement of the human society. Thank you. We have just been shared from the motion we have heard that AI is manipulating human minds. They have also said that there is economic inequality and social unrest due to the usage, extensive usage of AI. AI is used as a weapon for cyber attacks and other war in and other uh, war activities it has led to mass unemployment and too much of dependency on technology has made humans lazy against the motion have also cited their points which says that ai has revolutionized the way we think it helps in the health sector it is a companion which helps us to know ourselves AI has boosted the education and revolutionized the education system. It has helped in income generation, which has helped in the growth of GDP of different uh, areas. And also, it makes tasks easy and convenient for us. Let us hear what the rest of the participants have to say. From TSN from Southern College.
there has been more than 28,800 plus layoffs. 2, 000, more than 2,800 plus employees lost their jobs. And when an individual loses their job, they lose their source of income. And when there is no source of income, it becomes difficult for them to survive. So when survival becomes a problem, do you not think that it is a threat to human society? And to my worthy opponents, you can always refute this point by saying that artificial intelligence also brings new opportunities, new job opportunities. Yes, that, that's true, because obviously we need someone to manage the technologies and, but, let me ask the esteemed judges here. You work with technologies and you know that it's not something that everyone can do. There's people who cannot even operate basic computer works. So to expect everyone to work with artificial intelligence is beyond possibilities. Second of all, we have the deep fakes. We've all come across celebrities morphed into something they are not, or, you know, presidential figures fighting against each other. It's quite entertaining, I should say, even me, I've enjoyed some videos. But when people actually use our image and use it against us, I don't think it will be too entertaining. And it's 2023, come on, it's going to be 2024. And it's, now it's not a time for us to be worried about violations or harassment, but women, we are still harassed and we are still uh, sexually assaulted. And how is that so? Through the fate. According to an article posted by Wired on 16th October 2023, the heading of the article says, Deepfake porn is out of control. And according to the article, it seems the amount of pornography produced this year is going to top off the amount of pornography produced in the previous years combined. And this is made without the consent of the people used. And this is illegal. And nearest example, just in our neighboring state of Assam as well, just recently, a girl got to know that her naked pictures were spread around. And when she was, when she heard about it, she had no idea about it. Her life was ruined and she had never done such a thing in life. And how, how did that spread? A uh, young boy, ladies and gentlemen, a minor young boy had used artificial intelligence to use naked, to, to generate naked photos of girls and sold it on the internet for his side pocket money and ruined the lives of many young women. So that's what artificial intelligence is encouraging people to do. And also, my worthy opponent has also mentioned about artificial intelligence with traffic management. Well, let's not forget about the Tesla car crash that also cost two lives. And also, at the chat box as your companion, that chat box has also suggested someone to commit suicide. I don't think it's the best companion. In the words of Mo Gadot, for who is the former Google executive, we are at a point of human history where we are having over control. While AI may do things 10 times faster and 10 times better, we are also going behind 10 times faster. Thank you. That it can help us explore the universe, discover new worlds, understand about our own origins, and expand our understanding of consciousness in ways that we could have never imagined of our own. What would happen if AI decided that humans are a valuable partner in this topic, and that we can create more enlightened and fulfilling future for? Well, this time be closer to reality than you may think. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed fellow of judges, teachers, and my dear fellow friends. My name is Sebiju, currently at BBS Third Semester at Bethesda College, and today I stand before you to shed some light on how artificial intelligence is not a straight to human society, but it is a tool to revolutionize human society. So before we start, I want to establish a framework for a speech. I'll be focusing on two major points, right? So firstly, I'll be able to say what artificial intelligence is at its core, understanding fundamentally, because I believe if you want to make a sound decision on a thing, understanding things form its core is very well. Secondly, we'll understand what is how artificial is and artificial intelligence is going to revolutionize human Human society. So without further ado, let's delve into it. So firstly, what is artificial intelligence? Let's so term artificial intelligence first. First, coined by a man called John McCarthy, 1956. The objective behind this was to make an artificial intelligence. He was artificial to make a machine do the task that would normally require human intelligence. So there are two key terminologies that I want you to understand to truly know the potential power of AI. 
That is machine learning and deep learning. Now, these four terms got introduced in the 2000s, whereby you feed the data to a computer and it will understand. It will learn itself. And not just that, but it can also learn from its own experiences. It can also learn from its mistakes. And it can also improvise with the things that it takes. So it's basically much like a human, but with a massive range of information, massive range of data collection. So because of the use of this technology in the recent years, the rise of artificial intelligence has gotten a massive discussion in the recent years. So now, so now the question arises, how can we compete with an entity that poses vast knowledge and learning capacities, right? But, well, artificial intelligence is not here to compete with us. It is here to bridge the gaps of human deficiencies. Human deficiency. So, so now it takes us with another question that is, how is artificial intelligence going to revolutionize human society? Now there are three aspects that I want to touch on. Firstly, artificial intelligence is going to take away all the replace all the risky and hazardous jobs in areas such as ocean exploration, space exploration, ocean dead exploration, and design, and um, hazardous jobs, right? So, take an example of John Deere, right? Uh, it could have never happened if not because of an AI. With the implementation of AI, machine learning, autonomous technology, the successful learning of John Deere was possible. Now, the second thing is in discussion towards healthcare industry, right? Artificial intelligence is going to revolutionize the healthcare industry. Take an example of Pathia. Yeah. It is an AI platform that assists pathologists in diagnosing diseases like cancer, it helps them identify and classify diseases beforehand, whereby providing them more accurate and faster results. Now the last thing is in discussion towards artificial intelligence in backward setting environment, right? To take an example of how AI powered drones are used in South Africa, right? This AI, these drones are equipped with AI algorithms whereby they can differentiate between humans and animals, even at night, even at night. So when the pouches are detected, the ranges can go rapidly this way and help us in their life. So yes, now to conclude, obviously everything in the existence comes with a good side and a bad side, right? A hammer could be used to either smash someone's head or it could be used to construct a building or a house, right? It totally depends on the one that is using it. It totally depends on the intentions. It totally depends on the actions of the one that is using it. That is using it. So, so same goes with the AI, right? It totally, it has a good side and it has a good side. It totally depends on how you use it, right? So in my, I am finally to conclude, I believe artificial intelligence is innovative. It is here to say, and I believe those who fear artificial intelligence fear knowledge. Thank you so much, everybody. Today I will be representing the motion team here with the topic that artificial intelligence is a threat to the human society. Uh, first of all, I would like to counter one of the comments made by our position bench here that AI makes our makes the tax easier and convenient. Now, we the humans may think that the boring jobs that we are doing has been replaced by machines, but the fact is that as AI, the computer gets smarter and smarter it will take away what we love to do as well. That eventually people like you and I will get stressed out working next to such kind of a machine, that it is a threat to the human society. I would like to mention one of the major threats of AI, and that is threat to world peace. How can it be a threat to world peace? The U.S. military defense, which is the largest military defense in the world, made use of AI at a massive scale to mention the U.S. has signed a 24-month uh, contract with the Gotek industry just last year, where $49.9 million was sanctioned for the improvement of military defense. Now, let us think about a hypothetical situation where U.S. attacks a nuclear-armed country. It will be a catalyst, the boost for the World War III. Thus, the, considering the development of AI, we cannot simply dismiss it, dismiss it as a hypothetical scenario, but it is a possible threat to the world peace. Another is that on the impact on ideological differences, human society has grown because of the differences in the ideas that we have. But with the emergence of AI, it has imposed a monotony on the diverse area of ideology. That is, how can it be? Because AI is mostly programmed on Western liberal ideologies. And it was a threat. And as students, as we started relying on this AI, it, we bear the risk of indoctrination. We end up believing what we study. And 
if AI determines what we study, there is a risk of indoctrination for us by AI. Another very major important threat is on cyber crimes and threat to privacy. Uh, with the development of AI to such an extent where it, where it can emulate human behavior and voices, it has enabled the criminals to make use of this tool. And when you look into this, AI has made, has led to the emergence of AI generated images. And this has posed a threat, especially to the women, and it has led to increase in criminals. Thus, to conclude my statement here, just like the current issue of transgender, it is even discussing in the Supreme Court and the Parliament right now. The, a time is very near when we will be discussing about men married to a robot. And that is very near, I'm telling you. That is very near. And it is a threat to our human society. I would like to end with my statement here that artificial intelligence is a threat to our human society. It's a threat to us, you and I. Thank you very much. First of all, artificial intelligence is not a threat to human society. How can an artificial intelligence be a threat to human where the name itself is an artificial? It's not an original, right? How it can affect the human where the name itself is an artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is the ability or uh, it's, it's the access where it helps or where it is in the computer, it helps in the computer or a computer control system to help certain tasks or to perform certain tasks. I would like to give one of the best examples which is right in front of you all and right behind all the debaters and our sir. Um, our sir. This is the banner, right? This is the original and this is the slide being shown with the help of the projector and the computer, right? This is the original one, which is being, uh, I guess, to, to, to even build up this banner, it has takes, uh, taken a lot of time, right? And for the computer, it's just some click, right? If you want to edit this banner, now it's possible. With the help of the computer, but with this banner original, it's not, right? So, how can this artificial intelligence be a threat to human society? Talking of all those uh, famous leaders, Hawkins and Mas, they are frequently criticizing and claiming that AI poses a threat to human society, and because of them, because of what they say, it's a threat to human society. Because of them, it's letting people to think that their jobs will be taken away or lead to the third world war or the next world war, right? It's just their statement which is letting we common people to think that. A famous Chinese um, investors and a businessman say uh, once visited Jack Ma. He once visited the basketball museums and he said that in the olden times basketballs were played with a basket. There were no holes that where all those bas uh, all the where the balls will go off. The ball is taken off from the basket with the help of the leader. And here comes to say that a great man said, Why don't we cut the bottom so that it will make it easier, right? And from here, this basketball becomes more competitive, but the men have it. The people who hated the most was the one who was using the leather. And here, Jack Ma said that, Don't worry about all this. Worry about what we humans are. We are the humans. We have hearts, but the artificial intelligence works only with the help of the chips. And I would like to contradict one of the most important beings say uh, that it, about the world peace, U.S. military defense, and also talking about that Israel and uh, humans war, right? The Israel is making use of this artificial intelligence to detect to detect the drone, to detect, to be ready from the attack so that they can uh, attack back to them, right? They are making use of this artificial
artificial intelligence to detect the danger that is coming to them. And also talking about all this pornography. It's not the AI, it's the human greediness to earn, to, to make them, uh, to feel the love or whatever. The robots does not have any feelings or love. With this, I conclude that AI is not a danger, but human is making a threat to this society. Thank you. Respected panel of judges. Now, who wouldn't agree to the statement that artificial intelligence is indeed a threat to human society? We talk about the benefits of AI, but who is going to see those benefits? Artificial intelligence allows concentration for wealth and power that is unprecedented in the history of humankind. And most of the people who are investing in AI and who controls the AI and have the ownership of AI are only the richest because you need massive amounts of power, you need massive amount of compute, and you need massive amount of resources. Consider, under status quo, or right now, the power with which an oligarchy or concentration of private capital already keeps in a society that is even difficult to che be checked by a democratic society. Now, let's talk about unemployment problem. Consider the fact that you and I will not have a job likely in the future because our job is, be is going to be taken over by AI. Around the world, companies are incorporating automation and artificial intelligence to increase the efficiency of technology processes and to improve the productivity of their human workers. Consequently, people are facing a global threat of jobless. India's labor force faces a tough competition from robots. About 20 to 30 percent of uh, employers in India anticipate a decrease in headcount because of automation taking over low skill monotonous jobs. At Infosys, for example, some 11,000 workers have already lost their jobs to automation and 3,000 Wipro employees suffered the same fate after their company deployed forms, its AI project. Also, AI is highly unreliable. Uh, my worthy opponents have stated the re re reliability of AI in healthcare, but how far is it rely reliable? Can you rely on artificial intelligence for your healthcare? For instance, in 2020, the UK government developed an AI-based virtual assistant called Coronavirus Information Bot or CI Bot to answer questions about COVID-19. Uh, the bot was designed to provide information and guidance to the public about the virus and was made available through government website and social media channels. However, it was later discovered that the board was providing misinformation and incorrect guidance to the public on the topics related to COVID. For example, the board was found to be recommending the use of certain unproven treatments such as enhanced steel and was also found to be providing a misinformation about the transmission and severity of the virus. Also, the, uh, it is not a coincidence that uh, racism is on the rise because of, uh, because of the role of social media, which is AI. The current violence in Manipur escalated because of the role of social media, especially Facebook and WhatsApp. Think, AI in the romance is an insanely powerful weapon. We're fighting against something beyond superhuman, and whether or not we will be able to control it is something that is extremely uncertain. Taking the words of Elon Musk, AI is far more dangerous than news. With this, I would like to conclude by strongly stating that artificial intelligence is a threat to human society. Thank you. AI is everywhere and it is inevitable. Needless to say that AI has um, made our daily lives so much easier, so much easier um, and efficient in terms of healthcare, education, and it has also contributed significantly to the economy. But when it comes to AI, not every one of us have a positive uh, opinion because uh, the first concern that comes to our mind when we talk about AI is unemployment. Because everything that a human can do, AI can do it uh, better, faster, and more efficiently and without any errors. According to the World Economic Forum, while AI will likely take away 85 million jobs globally by 2025, it will also generate 98 million jobs. 
Um, and my worthy opposition has, opposition has mentioned that uh, the, AI, the jobs that AI will create will be based on technology. But it is important for us to consider that every inter that every introduction of um, technology has been has has had a negative impact on the society. But humans have always learned to adapt to it. In terms of healthcare. AI's ability to analyze what was vast amounts of uh, data in a short short period of time have helped the has helped the medical professionals to identify disease markers and trend, trends uh, that would otherwise be overlooked by humans. According to Howard School of Public Health, using AI to make diagnosis may reduce cost by reduce uh, treatment costs by up to 50% and improve, improve health outcome by 40%. And a team of researchers in the University of Hawaii found that deploying deep learning technology can, employ breast, can improve breast cancer rates. Another published story found that AI recognized skin cancer better than, um, better than experienced doctors, US, Germany, and French research French researchers have used deep learning on more than uh, 100,000 images and to identify skin cancer compare, and comparing the results of AI to those 58 international dermatologists, they found AI did better. Not only that, but AI also helps doctors to communicate better with their patients. In terms of economy, according to a report by the McKinsey Global Institute, it is speculated that artificial intelligence has the potential to add up to 16 or about 13 do trillion dollars to the global economy by the year of 2013. And additionally, it could also boost the global cost gross domestic product by up to 26 percent. In terms of education, AI brings the ability to have 24 hour access to teachers and lessons. And according to the article of Times by India with the rise of AI in education, there are many different ways it is being used to help students learn by introducing technologies such as chatbots and virtual reality. Many people may argue that AI will replace teachers. However, there are many advantages of AI in education. AI can create papers and essays much faster than a human, which will increase, uh, which will give the teacher more time to interact with the students. Also, AI has saved many lives. According to BBC News, the senior AI research at the, at the Free University of Amsterdam developed a program called the Tree Hole Rescue. And in the past 18 months, this program has been used by 600 volunteers across China, who in turn say that they have rescued nearly 700 people from committing suicide. So with all the points, I would like to say that AI is not a threat to humanity. Uh, past week, 
uh, yes, already replaced with Kyoto personal which is with AI. To one, in, to one which is an Indian startup company, is also replaced 19 personal which is uh, staff citing that AI can do the other job. It is estimated that probably uh, 800 million jobs will be replaced by AI by 2030. And if that is not scary to you, I don't know what will scare you. Uh, one of the uh, traits of AI again is its dependency. We like to say that a chat GPT gives very fast information, but that information comes from somewhere, and that information comes from uh, writers who are get who get paid to write those kind of stuff. And if any, uh, if there's too much dependency on this fast information, then there will be less creators, and the source of information will also deplete. And let's also not forget that AI is uh, the development of uh, modern AI is a product of capitalism. There is a reason why very, very big companies like uh, Google and Microsoft spend billions investing into uh, AI data. And this is risk. And whoever holds the power, most powerful AI holds the most information. They can manipulate the information. And if there is any character to, uh, defining characteristics of capitalism, it is that the welfare of people is not its primary objective. It is profit. And if it means that, if it means holding the information or misleading people, then it will be done. Uh, one of the Geoffrey Hinden, who is the cast of AI, has started one of the, the greatest uh, threat of AI, of, of AI is it, uh, is it overtaking the world. And he gives a very simple reason. He says the, the reason is that AI, the primary objective of AI is to realize this objective. In the best way, the shortest way to uh, realize the objective is to amass more powerful results. And he says, and he says it is a matter of time. It's only a matter of time that AI will take over the world. And uh, to conclude, I would like to say that uh, AI has taken integrated every aspect of our life, from science and technology to arts, music, even to our mind and detail. And if there is so much information out there, if there is no proper intervention, then that will be the care of society at this moment. Thank you.
uh, one that has also said that in the near future there will be a marriage on a robot. But uh, according to me, it's according. Uh, not everyone is going to marry a robot because it's according to their likeness. I should say like uh, because uh, there is. Some people who find comfort from these robots, not everyone, but there are some who find so, uh, comfort from these robots, and these robots are helping them, uh, giving them comfort, so it's their right to marry whatever machines they want to, it's all them. They have been given the right to do everything they want, so I should say that this is not going to be a much dangerous threat to the human society. And I, sh I would like to ask, if you are asking, uh, if you are asking why uh, AI is a threat to uh, human society, I would like to ask you which AI design is given a, uh, is given a threat to human society because not every AI design is, given, is being a threat to uh, human society. So I would like to ask you in this question, please uh, use this and be a part of, uh, be a part and support of an AI, AI. Thank you. AI has disturbed the world peace. It has imposed a monotony on the different ideology. It has also led to the concentration of wealth and power in the hands of the few. Automation has led to a huge amount of job loss. Whereas against the motion, I have also stated that it is AI is not here to compete, but to bridge the gap between humans and technology. It has made life easier and efficient. It has the capacity to adapt to human thinking and it has boosted global economy and also in the field of education, AI is available and it has helped in the assistance of many students. AI has also saved life. That is what we have heard so far. We have six more participants who will be stepping forward and sharing your opinion. So I request you all to kindly maintain silence and enjoy the rest of the debate. The work of thousands of ordinary minds, but no AI can replicate the brilliance of one extraordinary human brain because AI itself is a creation of human intelligence. Good afternoon to one and all, respected principal, teachers, judges, uh, the timekeeper and my fellow competitors. My name is Kajal Kumari and I'm representing Elder College, Kohima. And today I'm going to present my views in motion of the topic, artificial intelligence is a threat to human society. Now we all know that artificial intelligence have helped humans uh, by taking all the troubles through its extraordinary automated features. But do you know at what cost? The cost is much more higher. When we look about it, it empties the treasuries of human potentials and human capabilities. AI developers see that it is for the help of the humans, but is it really so? Because the experts who are checking AI problems have already found that there are, there are more than 500 accidents because of artificial intelligence, ranging from self-driven cars to chat systems uh, creating racist contents. From the 2022 database, there were around 90 incidents, and the first three months of 2023 created around 45 incidents. Now, we are at the rate of 180 incidents at present this year. Now, according to the uh, survey, according to a recent survey, around 89% of the students copy their homeworks, assignments, projects from chat GPT. And this dependency and uh, reliability on the AI technology is leading to a loss of critical thinking and um, knowledge among the human beings. We all know job displacement is there. Even the creative jobs like graphic designers are being displaced because of artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence can also uh, invade the privacy of the people without their consent. They create convincing deep fake videos of people saying or doing things uh, which they have, they have actually never done. Now, cyber criminals also use AI powered voice to mimic the voices of certain people and demand money uh, from their relatives. 
They just make three seconds of an audio recording of the person and they'll convert it into a cloned voice with 85% voice match to the original one. Unfortunately, India adopts a date for the victim of AI power voice camps, with 83% of the people already losing their money. Now, one of our worthy opponents said that art make artificial intelligence more intelligent. Now, let us see the consequence of making artificial intelligence more intelligent. Let me give you an example. In the top robotics uh, company in Japan, four robots were being developed for military application and killed around 29 humans through metal bullets. And the scariest part is when the lab workers begin to deactivate the two and took apart the third one, the fourth began to connect to the orbiting satellite and the, he began to download the information about how to make itself even more stronger. So it's very scary. Artificial intelligence is, uh, of course, one of our vertical opponents say that uh, it depends on the intention of the person. But what if the intention of the person is bad? We never know. Because if it goes to the hands of somebody who has a bad intention, you will face the consequences. Uh, in the end, I just want to say that artificial intelligence is absolutely not a safe means and uh, the demerits may be very huge, but so are uh, the merits are very huge, but so are the demerits, and we should not promote artificial intelligence, in fact, minimize its use. Thank you so much. There is nothing wrong in increase of artificial intelligence, but there is something wrong when there is a decrease in human intelligence. First January 1983, when the internet was made public to everyone, everyone was so curious and shocked, stating that it will land up confining jobs of millions. But where do we stand today? Internet has boomed the economic sector. We are well aware of that. Our worthy opponents have mentioned about job losses. By 2030, the AI based companies and job sector will be worth $100 billion. That's the sector that we, you and I are going to be part of it. And if now you consider that AI is a threat, I ask you to reconsider your thought. The World Economic Forum suggested that predicted 97, new, 97 million new jobs by 2025. Healthify Me, Narmina, which was developed in 2016, is a part of our own Indian hospitals. They are making use of it to diagnose cancers and other related diseases. From agriculture to landing on the moon, from classrooms to, to virtual realities, all has been made possible because of AI. Why are we, why do we consider AI as a threat? It has made our life easier, right? Yes or no? Apple's Siri. Amazon's Alexa, when was the last time you were scared of using Google? AI should be used as a companion. It depends on you how you use AI. You should think, we should think how to use AI. Right? For instance, I use ChatGPT for my creativity to improve my knowledge about certain topics. It helps me improve my own knowledge not to make me lazy at all. Our world opponent mentioned about that incident in Japan. I agree with her, but I also disagree because no evidences has been found to prove that. Someone mentioned about confining, confinements. So I tell you, how do we confine AI? Idea of 2000, the Digital Protection Act of recent 2023 are all based for the protection and confinement of AI. These are all cyber laws. Canada Blue Dot, as someone, Canada's Blue Dot, as someone mentioned, for the, during the use of COVID-19 has helped us in an immense way. India is the fifth growing economy. And AI is a must need for this. According to statistics, 60% of young age from 16 years of age to 24 are using AI to develop themselves. And in, when talking about world peace, AI has always helped in maintaining world peace. Resistance systems, sense, technology, software, all has been helping us to improve our own environment. 
human capabilities. The best stand where we uh, stand is in top is where we have subconscious mind. We have common sense. AI doesn't have common sense. That's where we beat AI. We know what is right and what is wrong. And for me, AI and human society are the two sides of the same coin. And till uh, now, there is no turning back because we have already started started using it. And as a country in India, if we don't use AI, I don't think we will be standing anyway. Thank you. Intelligence might be programmed to do as well as or better than human, said Brian Green. Respected moderator, critic, esteemed opponents, my benchmates, and everyone present here, I will start my expression of views to support the statement AI is a threat to human society by firstly articulating the problems in our personal afflictions to the worldwide in general. I will speak on three contexts. The first is, let us consider the first argument on ChatGPT and auto-generated chat box which is eliminating the role of self-reliance, self-reliance, and this particularly is eliminating in the key role, the key tool for students on developing critical thinking. The second point, let us go back to the global unemployment, which is estimated to have reached 208 million by 2023 with an unemployment rate of 5.8%. Now, this makes us a way to think that by, by the next two to three decades, uh, half a billion of global unemployment might be estimated. There is a reason why, uh, why companies will not hire you and they will hire AI because AI can do a cheaper job, 10 times cheaper than you and 100 times more efficient than you. That is the future of our employment. To understand the nuances, we, have, we can conclude in the path of mental well-being and social affliction, which by the cognitive development AI is constantly limiting our pleasures and happiness because people are not confined to their mobile phones to what AI can offer and not to what social development can offer. So this is ultimately going to lead, reduce the quality of life force in social environment, social environment which we are partly affecting to it. So um, I will give two responses regarding the social afflictions in our society. The trust of AI plays an important role in working society. Let us take ourselves back to the failure of Google Photo Search Engine in 2015, where face recognition software that steadily labeled black people as gorilla. If this face recognition system is used in criminal laws and judgments, just imagine the judgment in spite of 99% accuracy that one person left to label thousands of innocents to imprisoned men and they will be imprisoned of false detention. One notable case of this failure was in 2019 when Robert Williams was arrested and imprisoned by the Detroit Police Department not for a crime he never committed because, but because of a failure of AI algorithm based recognition failure. The interesting fact was that this was not the only first time uh, you talked about accuracy in medical supervision. Let, let me talk about this. In 2019, an AI-based system in India reportedly misdiagnosed a patient lung cancer, which failed to provide a uh, right result and uh, ultimately leading to his death. Now, we have to ask ourselves now, what, what were those when an AI, AI talked of accuracy, proficiency, and 10 times better than human doctors? Where are those? The framework of my point is AI and a full flash potential which will ultimately alter the consideration of wealth and power. This is another beginning of new potency with which will dilate the gulf between the privileged and the unprivileged in the light of the various physical, economical, and social implications associated with AI. It is clear that if AI is left unchecked, the rapid advancement will pose a significant threat to the very fabric of human society, to which I am proud to oppose. Thank you. I'm the President Dima, College Prima. Uh, I'll be responding to the fellow speakers before me. Mm, prior to talking about artificial intelligence possible risks, it is crucial to recognize all of the positive effects that technology has had so far and will continue to have on society. AI is a tool that can be used for good or harm and its impact 
depends on how it is deployed and regulated. As stated by one of our fellow speaker previously, that Geoffrey Hinton left his job to warn and create an awareness to people the dangers of AI. Just because that he's a renowned person, it doesn't mean that his decision should, should affect our perception. It's important to remember that his decision should not un unduly influence our judgment regarding whether AI poses a threat to humanity or not. Remember, we are individuals. We are individuals in a democratic society, country, and we should not. We should have freedom of cho choices, and we should make our own informed choices. It, it solely depends on you. It, it depends on you whether uh, you utilize. It solely depends on you on how you utilize your brain, your time, your skills, your creativity, your ideas, your, your innovations, and you, and how you integrate and how you integrate AI into your life. So why exactly, or how exactly is AI affecting humanity? If you are affected by, by AI, it shows that you are unwilling to adapt a changing world and are limiting your own progress. Books, books are limited. We do not get all the information from one book, and we do not get all the important books from the library. Let us take one example within our context. Because uh, because of the recent incident uh, of Manipur, the Manipur situation has worsened, and their government and their government is trying to control people and and ban the internet access, which is immediately and automatically deeply affecting the students' life because of the limited resources. This AI AI tools help to enhance the students' learning experiences. Another example outside the Indian context is that China. In China, it is gaining popularity for its AI-based system for tracking students' performances. The AI bots and system collect data from various sources, including attendance records, the students' test performances, homework completions, and classwork behavior. And with the help of this, the, even the parents they can track and they can track and get access to their uh, to their children, to their child's progress and performances. And with the help of the AI providing sufficient resources, su uh, sufficient resources and information, the students can improve where they are lately. In this 21st century, we are all living in a modern technological advanced world, coexisting with the ecosystem. So it is inevitable to not use the assistance of AI. AI also contributes to achieving the goals of the EU Green Deal, strengthening democracy. This is to ensure that AI is a benefit to all. To conclude, I would like to toss you all a question. How much of the fear surrounding AI is driven by science fiction and media portrayals rather than real world evidence? But what about the dangerous side of AI? Is it worth taking the risk? Before we dive deeper into this, I would like to respond to some of the arguments posted by the past speakers. AI in the medical field. Well, AI is not perfect. It can still make mistakes. And relying on AI, especially in the field of medical diagnosis, it becomes questionable. Studies have shown that AI uh, can misdiagnose a benign tumor as a malignant tumor. And uh, employment. In the artificial intelligence can create uh, some new job opportunities in some aspect. However, it is likely inevitable that AI will take up more jobs than it will create. And for developing countries like us, with such a vast population, uh, how are we going to make a survival? Are we going to compete with our own technology for survival? And AI expanding our boundaries of knowledge. Is it really expanding our boundaries of knowledge? Let us look in our, into our context, artificial intelligence and students. We might get an assignment or we might uh, get a doubt. We just drop the question into Google, ChatGPT or any educational website and get direct answers without any mistakes, without using our critical thinking skills, without using our imagination. Is it really expanding to our boundaries of knowledge? Is AI already out of control? Way back in 1992, uh, Deep Blue, an IBM computer, has already beaten the world's best chess player. All the alpha to go, that is now regarded as one of the best Go players in the world. We might already have been unconsciously under the control of AI. 
AI has already taken many things from us. AI has replaced humanity in many fields. For example, social interaction. These are basic skills for development. But with further advancement in AI, humanity has isolated uh, themselves more and more from the real world. Futurist Ray Kurzweil used a set of models and data to predict that as early as 2045, yes, 2045, artificial intelligence will have uh, overtaken human intelligence, also known as singularity in the realm of AI. This super AI, or the conscious AI, or an AI that is free from human control. How are we going to ensure that this will be only for the better of humanity? Because if AI uh, has the ability to love, it can also hate at the same time. This can lead to many catastrophic outcomes, as depicted, uh, depicted in science fiction like uh, the creator or the matrix, where AI has taken over human. Also, in artificial intelligence, there is lack of consent, lack of transparency. For example, in China, artificial intelligence is used to set up a social credit system uh, that monitors people in their day-to-day -day life basis, rewarding and punishing the citizens based on that data. Today, many great people like Elon Musk has raised their concerns for AI. Or many big platforms like Ecdot raising their concern for AI, many big podcasts. I think these are enough evidence for us to reconsider AI before we go any further. In search for more comfort, more changes, we might lose everything which we have built so far, even ourselves. Therefore, I stand here to say that artificial intelligence is a threat for humanity. Thank you. I can drink a cup of coffee, watch humans argue about AI, but no cup of coffee was given to me. So I stand here on behalf of the opposition party that AI is a boon to human and not a threat. Respectable guests of honor, our principal, judges, and the timekeeper. I want to start with uh, ChatGPT, as our worthy opponent have given out ChatGPT. It is nice, and I'm happy to see uh, us arguing about ChatGPT and AI taking all the information which are provided by AI. Now when you talk about AI robots which was uh, sent to, uh, to outside spaces uh, as how uh, former opponents have shared, actually uh, it was put in a religious view. So uh, from a religious uh, point of view I would say that AI helps us to understand and accumulate the information outside of our limited earth that is the, uh, outside the earth that is the solar system, the universe to see how great our God is, to see the uniqueness of God. I will say that, and also, when we talk about the malfunction of AI, it is not every time. And also, um, American activists, uh, physicists and uh, futurologists, a scientist, Michio Kaku, he said that AI cannot malfunction if there is any point of malfunction, AI has been embedded with a voice command that to shut down immediate, immediately. And with the uh, increased uh, production of AI, like implementing in uh, environmental, uh, sorry, agricultural uh, work, AI. In India, it has been uh, in the recent years with the implementation of AI in agriculture. Farmers, uh, an example is the peanut farmers have gained 30% more of what they re usually reap in the pre previous years. Now when we talk about cyber attack and bullying, GPS navigation, I won't be standing here uh, talking uh, from the opposition side if there's no GPS navigation, I'll still be roaming around in Bohemia town because I don't know the place. The Google map led me here. Now, uh, cyber bullying, this is why the they introduced the General Data Protection Regulation and also the California Consumer Privacy Act which helps uh, consumers and which helps the people to know what kind of data and to limit their data to, know, uh, to help them educate themselves to see what kind of data uh, to be given out. And also uh, in 2020 the French, uh, the European Union, uh, sorry, the French Data Protection has fined the Google uh, 50 million euros for violating the GDPR. 
Uh, when you talk about job survival and all, when you talk about that uh, disaster jobs, let's see, let's take a step back to Chernobyl accident, an incident that is in uh, Ukraine uh, back in the years when there was no AI. So if that uh, the radiation was so hard that the, uh, the Chernobyl incident, the radiation of that incident was so bad that people cannot come in to save those lives. So if there was an AI robot to help, uh, to help those people who were in need of the help, then why would human risk? So so many risky jobs have been taken up by AI, including like uh, carrying of big logs of or big stuff, the things which are risky to human life. And actually, when we talk about the AI, uh, about beating human into, it is actually human uh, mind and intellectual putting into a chip to data that is given to AI. That is why it is called artificial intelligence. And if at all a chess player, as how our opponent have uh, cited, the chess player being beaten by an AI, it only shows that human will gives it gives human a platform to stay, take another level to increase and uh, their intellectual. Uh, we talk about the Tesla, but let us see the Tesla uh, vehicle has reduced the emission of uh, uh, waste uh, comparing to the petrol and the diesel vehicles that uh, prevailed in our life. And with this point, I stand firm that AI is a boon to human society. Thank you. I would, refuse, I would refuse that consciousness is not possible in AI, which are conceptual tools, computational tools, and that instead the existential which debate represents a fundraising trade chain. The argument warns and being traits that AI will become super intelligent of overpowering human intellectuals or human creators to pursue it, its own unimaginable ends and to remove life, menace life as it takes over the planet. And not only that, the founder of Tesla and iSpace, uh, SpaceX founder Elon Musk in the year 2023, along with 1,000 tech leaders, have urged that citing an artificial intelligence could be trade to a human society if it is not used wisely. Thank you for this time. Gentlemen, so let's start off with the first point. One of our opponents has said that the U.S. military has caused a fear of us being in threat. But let's not forget in 2020 that our country, India, Russia, China, Japan has already put so much emphasis as well as investment in AI as well. We must not forget that we do not live in a unipolar world anymore. Quoting a political analyst in 2015, Amitav Acharya, he who said that we live in a multipolar world. Now, let's get on to the socio-economic inequalities that will occur, as my opponents have said. Let's not forget that we, human beings, are the ones who created AI. We are the creators, we are the pioneers, we are the ones who program AI, and that we should not forget. And without us, AI is nothing. We should also not forget that creativity. One of my opponents said that our creativity, whatever we love, will be taken away from us. Now, I stand here before you as a digital artist myself, who now I can vouch that AI, being in the digital spaces, have only amplified our potential. It has not impacted us in any way whatsoever. Let's talk about the Manipur issue, which you have mentioned as well. It is not because of AI that the Manipur issue is what it is right now. The Manipur issue is a nuanced issue. Both communities have uh, made this issue so uh, big now. Now we see that one of the main problems has been because of this um, the administration of the CM. Now these are the things which I would like to highlight. Thank you. A friend, a Canadian philosopher once said, Knowing what to say is sense. When to say it is intelligence. How to say it is wisdom. How and why to say it is enlightenment. I would like to leave this podium with a note for everyone.
technology. The biggest advantage of technology for me is it has given me enough time to do things quickly. And the biggest disadvantage that I see about technology is I have lost my social contact. How are you? How are you using your technology? Thank you all. I give the rest of the time to our chairperson. I introduced myself on the topic of AI. I'm so privileged to be here. Um, I wish there was someone who is technologically advanced in his or her knowledge to be a judge rather than a person like me, um, who has very superficial knowledge but trying to do my best to make the best judgment that I could. Like, there's a cliche in every competition saying that everyone did well, but since it is a competition, it has to be graded and it has to be marked. So that's a cliche, and sometimes there is some truth in some cliche as well. So I would like to express the same truth and same cliche over here. It's quite interesting in a sense that uh, we all have that knowledge of the threat as well as the benefits of artificial intelligence um, in the best way we could. And those debaters, as well as the moderator, you all have done a great job. Thank you for that. And now coming, getting back to the basics of uh, some of the feedbacks that I would like to, or some of the comments that came to my mind were, um, yes, this is a topic which is not, which can, which is always debatable. And there is no absolute right or absolute wrong on this topic, as far as my understanding is concerned. Meaning, when we say that artificial intelligence is a threat, there is, some, there is truth in that. At the same time, when we say that artificial intelligence is a booster or impetus to human life, there is some truth in that as well. And the best part is we have to, and we have to debate around that. So, it all comes down to skill rather than your uh, reasoning skill of what is right and what is wrong, right? Um, so, some of the things that I taught would really fetch a great point for people who say that artificial intelligence is a threat. Now, when we look at it, those who design and create artificial intelligence are also human beings, as you all have pointed out. But also we don't have to forget that they are designed by human beings having some sort of ideological um, alignment or ideological leaning and having some sort of philosophy and having some sort of ethics. So imagine in the 1940s and 30s a Nazi party had the idea of designing artificial intelligence. What kind of artificial, artificial intelligence are we going to get? So it's very important to also reflect on who designs it and what kind of ethics and what kind of political ideology that person hold, holds. So, in, our, in the context of our society as a Christian state, I mean, not as official, but where population is majority Christians, suppose artificial intelligence is designed by an atheist, which will say that there is no idea of God as such that can directly affect your faith as well. Just to give, just to give you an example. And, now, there is a strong accusation in the, in the Western countries, especially in the U.S., that artificial de intelligence designed by the Google is leading towards the left liberal ideology, which promotes um, abortion and which promotes um, same-sex marriage and all of this. So, any young children who is going to use this artificial intelligence will be strongly influenced by that. Those points would have also I mean, you all have mentioned the great, great points, but those are the points which, as a judge, um, I was not able to hear much. And at the same time, some people mentioned about capitalism. So as a society that is deeply rooted in the idea of welfare, welfareism, like when you look at India, artificial intelligence will benefit the creator and the cohort around the creators. Because it's all a capitalized, tool in it, and that works best under capitalistic economy. 
um, in a socialistic economy that concerns about the welfare of the citizens may not get benefited much as we all imagine. And another thing is privacy. Some people have mentioned, which is which was very nice. Privacy is the most concerning thing during um, in, in the midst of the outbreak of technology and artificial intelligence. You will not be able to hide your private life. You will not be able to keep yourself aloof to yourself anymore. As anybody can access any data easily at any point of time. And that can lead to threatening your life. Suppose someone wants to attack me. They know where to find me. They know where to attack me. And what are the weaknesses and what are the things that I am vulnerable to. And they may take advantage of that. Those are just examples. On the other side, um, one could have said about this strong point I was uh, sort of expecting. AI has its own weakness, but as long as, as long as there is strong human regulations or regulations or regulatory policy, then AI can be very, very safe for all of us. But in the absence of regulatory policies, nothing is safe, not, not even your life in your kitchen. Right? So those are very logical things. So as long as there's a law, there's a law that regulates the usage of AI and to up to some extent, then anything that you imagine, anything, any force that helps us in this world can be safe. But when there is no such regulatory measures, then literally you're not safe to me. I'm not safe in front of you because you can just kill me anytime you want to. But there is a law that no one should murder each other. No one should commit crime against any human beings. That's why we are not committing crimes here against each other. So those are some of the arguments um, which you all have touched in a very subtle way. But focusing on that would have also um, uh, fetched a great impression on your argument. So those are the points that I was also thinking through as a judge and, and which uh, were somehow more or less missed out um, here and there. So the good points that you have all brought up, like artificial intelligence, jobs, and all of this, we don't need to. Re I don't need to repeat again. Um, it's all wonderful. You all have done a great job. Um, and of course, I could see some students who are not from te technological background also speaking very, very well on this, and some tech students. Um, who are from technology background, so speaking on human ethics and the social ethics, which is very, very nice. I mean, you are you have the capacity and you have uh, the bandwidth in your understanding of um, the social aspects also, although you are not from a social uh, studies background. And I mean, and, and, and meantime, those who, those who study social science also are able to speak very well on technology. So it's all about debating skills, um, where you have to keep our objectivity outside for a while and this debate as a um, very interesting point for the sake of debating to judge whether we have the debating skill or not. So I think that I have taken a long time, so thank you so much. You all have done a great job and I appreciate all of you for participating. Thank you. Uh, I think this is the way forward. You have debates and also have discussions on a lot of issues that's coming up and then the advancements that's happening around the world. Mr. Nongleng, my co-judge, has, you know, described, uh, has given feedback on a lot of topics. I will not go to that. Maybe I'll just give my two cents on what AI is and what my personal opinions are uh, since I work in the technology sector. And I'm also very passionate about this development that's happening uh, right now. Uh, you know, AI, somebody had mentioned about the story of basketball, where for so many years, they were just playing basketball, you know, by just hanging a basket without a hole in it. And somebody came up with the idea to cut a hole in the basket, and then they were able to play. And you know who was the uh, saddest person in this story? The one who held the ladder. He had to climb up there and bring down the ball. So in that sense, we as young students, we need to uh, adapt to the ever-changing techn te technological revolution, not just in AI, but in so many other sectors. We need to
get, we need to accumulate knowledge, the skills, and then to thrive so that the world needs us. AI is replacing a lot of jobs, but at the same time, if you are a painter, if you are a content writer, you can become a better content writer by leveraging AI. If you are a developer, if you are an engineer, you can become a better engineer by leveraging AI. That's my two cents. When you talk about the dangers of AI, we have seen autonomous vehicles, and we can even imagine autonomous in the legend drones just hovering around and beyond human capability just to destroy a human population or, or anything. But at the same time, we can also think about uh, autonomous drones that are built and designed to counter those attacks. Right? We have missiles in warfare, at the same time we have uh, anti-missiles. We have tanks, we have bombs that can counter tanks. So these two uh, forces will always leverage each other. It all depends on who wins the race. China is not far behind from us. The US is like full on in the technology. And if you see at the government policies, the government is not ready at all. They have no idea what's going on. So we as citizens, we have to be like very proactive and trying to learn what's happening in this space. Because for us, Nagas, we missed out on the internet revolution that happened in the 90s, the boom that happened, but the AI revolution is happening right now and thanks to the internet, we are now able to see all the developments that's happening in the West. And I'm so happy that we live in this generation because when Jack GPT came out in December last year, we were one of the first to even try it out. So without the internet, we could not even imagine that, right? So AI, Infrastructure is coming up. We as young people, we need to leverage on how we can not just use AI, not just utilize the tools that's available, but how can we create products and services by leveraging AI, right? When the internet came out, like I've mentioned, a lot of startups, Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, all the shopping carts, internet-based companies developed, right? And we, I, I work in the technology sector, we are also leveraging that this internet to build a startup from Kohima, from Nagri. Similarly, as the AI infrastructure is building up, I think we young people need to kind of leverage and think beyond not just to consume the tools, but also to create the tools, create startups, so that our products and services could be used by people not just from Nagaland, not from India, but you know, we could build products uh, which would be used by any, anyone, anywhere in the world. So, in short, I just want to encourage young people to come up forward because uh, when you talk about technology, you might be from an arts background, you might be from a science background, you do engineering, but you can always learn new things, new skills, and innovate, all right? So that's all from my side. Thank you so much for having us today, and uh, I wish everyone a very best of luck in your future endeavors. I, when I saw feedback from the judges, I actually thought we're just gonna give the score sheet, but apparently I have to speak. Um, thank you so much to all the participants for giving us a good show. And um, on my end, I will always be biased when you ask my personal opinion because I am from the uh, technology background. But um, I swear I was not biased with the scoring. Um, I have been in this field and uh, not for a very long time, but uh, ever since I started working. And the discussions that were brought up today, the points, the certain elements that you guys were able to uh, point out, which were never in the back of my head as well, I was actually very happy. And as someone who is always working in this field, these are some certain ethical questions sometimes, and I just need to lay back at, uh, at home and just ask myself as well. So I learned so many things. I'm sure you guys did your own research, and uh, those. Uh, those were very helpful to me as well, as a person. Um, there are certain things that I would like to highlight regarding uh, AI, because 
give it or uh, give and take, AI will progress, even if you are opposing it. And that's the truth. So there are certain things that we need to be aware of. Like uh, we have come up with, uh, some of you have taken up issues of regulation, ethics and all. Yes, but as a state in Ireland, um, I am, so introduce me here, I am actually working in the state policies and then in our state we have around 10 to 11 functional policies which are dating back from around I think, uh, 1998 to 2002 or three something like that. So some of you were not even born but at that time when the, when the policies were made. So certain amendments need to be made to our policies. And in those policies, AI needs to be added. The regulations, the ethics that's concerned and revolving around this. Because every sector will uh, implement AI in the near future. It could be agriculture, it could be education, it could be healthcare in different uh, niche components also. So those are certain things when you guys uh, have that opportunity, give it a thought about it. And for me, someone who's working in the AI, I always look at AI as something that brings solution. So we have people who has, who has brought up like AI has uh, given this, given that, they, uh, done that, but it's all about intentions at the end of the day. So as long as our intention is good, our purpose should also be good. And uh, that's pretty much it. I was not intending to speak as well, but uh, it will be awkward if two of them speak and I don't. So thank you so much and uh, have a great day. Was it critical thinking and books or was it artificial intelligence that helped you to do? <laughs> so, see, today artificial intelligence has become an integral part of our lives. With opportunities being created, threats also come. Threats also come. Today we see that many countries of the world have a very strong digital base. So because of this, better health care has come, transport has become safer, services have become cheaper, the fashion and tourism industry is also booming. Education is facilitated. Just think of COVID-19, the pandemic. We had no access to classrooms. If it wasn't for what we are debating today, education would have come to a standstill. And that would have been an irreparable loss to a human kind. But besides this, AI also provides us a lot of information from this vast database, which helps strengthen democracy. But there are a number of challenges which we acknowledge. As these systems, AI systems, are getting more sophisticated, we are becoming more dependent on these systems. But whatever it is, we are still in the early stages of AI. It's just begun. But it has just begun, but still, it's been mentioned by some of the debaters, Elon Musk, and so many technologists, AI technologists, have urged for stoppage of experimentation, but not all experimentation, just major AI experimentation, artificial super intelligence, which may create havoc in our world today. Jeffrey Hinton, it was Counter the Jeffrey Hinton is just one individual. Yes, it's true. But he's not called the godfather of AI for nothing. His contribution and his knowledge is tremendous. What Jeffrey Hinton was worried about is, was that artificial intelligence, I mean, we may lose control over to artificial intelligence. In 2019, Pope Francis warned of the ability of AI to circulate biased opinions. And we see it today. 
politicians are using these tools? In the form of false data? Now this is hampering democracy. It's destroying democracy. So we see digital platforms being used by a multitude of politicians all over the world, including India. Our Lok Sabha elections are totally dependent on artificial intelligence. Why? To manipulate elections, the electoral process. Now another matter came GPS. So, you see, GPS has made our lives very easy. Those days, the sailors had to look at the stars and the sun and the moon and navigate through. So then we just have the GPS. Of course, we have become dependent on the GPS, but again, artificial intelligence has made us very complacent. Chat GPS. So, this is making us lazy. We are coming to that stage of evolution when we may use the use of our senses if we become too dependent on artificial intelligence. There's a danger. Uh, it is said by 2030, hundreds of millions of jobs could be lost worldwide. Some of you have mentioned it. A major concern, however, here is the widening social, social economic inequality. The lower run of society are getting less salaries, they are losing the jobs. The people right on top, the white collar job people, are gaining. But this is the human nature. It's a very strong trait of human beings. Some people are very kind, some people are very harsh. It's the way. We were born, the way we were brought up, our environment, our society taught us that. But it is also predicted that by 2025, AI will create millions of jobs. Manch won the debate competition, inter-college debate competition 2023. The total, the total point was 3,000. So the bench that won the inter-college debate competition 2023 is the Treasury Bench with <laughs> 1,613. And the opposition bench scored 1,559 points. A round of applause for both. Thank you. 
these points toward one system. Thank <laughs> you. 